hello guys welcome back to my channel hope you guys are feeling good my name is bukumi bk crown so guys we're gonna be checking out this video together titled ex muslim youth tells zaki nike why he left islam okay guys let's watch do we have a question from this mic yeah, here sure i just first like to say thank you for coming here and my name is puya so i'm a student drama and I come from Iran, not Iraq. Iran, the old name Persia. So I come from a religious family. My father, I mean, my family are Muslim. But I born as a Muslim, but I didn't want to born as a Muslim because, you know, so as a family I born. But still, I haven't accepted Islam because of some certain points. Hmm. Uh, my main question was about, I mean, about the time, like ancient time, back to the thousand years ago. When the time the Islam come to my country and we became a Muslim. So as I read in the history and those kind of stuff, I found it out that the Arab countries, so they attacked my country and they invade my country and they brought Islam by force. Without my king accepted. So Persia was an old country and it was the most civilized country from the ancient time until now. We believe a real God, we were worshipping a real God and our religion was Zartosh. So he was a prophet also. So we believe in good things, good thought, good words. So even Cyrus the Great, he was the king of the world and he was doing a lot of good things even some people they was confused that they call him Masiha Masi mm. he was doing many good things but he was never said I'm a prophet I'm a god but even though that king when he attacked the other country he never killed a civilian he never raped a woman and he never made them to change the religion even somebody was worshiping a cow he respect for them even though he was worshiping a real god he can he can he could make them to worship also same as what is worshiping but in the Islam way if you are if you're going to promote your religion, doesn't mean that you have to force it to somebody else or you have to make them to accept that religion because, you know, human being means freedom. So anyone, they should have a right, human rights. So maybe those people that didn't want that religion, so why they have to attack and, you know, to bring it by force? That was the main question that made my heart a bit, you know, <laughs> to make me to my belief go down. So... Brother, are you Parsi? Pardon? Yeah, I'm from Fars. Pars. Are you a Parsi? You mean... Farsi. Are you a Parsi? Are you a Zoroastrian? No, I, I'm not following any religion. You don't belong to any religion? I don't, I don't believe. But you said the parents were? My parents are Muslim, but because of this confusion and stuff, I never try to follow the religion. I just believe in real God and doing the good things. So you believe so in real God and good things. What are the good things? Where do you get the good things from? Good things like I don't harm the others. Whatever I'm doing, not try to harm the others. That's the first thing. As much as you can do the good things, even helping the others, and believe in the real God, not worshipping a stone or leaf or whatever. And I believe God is single. Hmm. So, but I didn't so you have your own son. philosophy. <laughs> so you want to bring a new religion. Hmm. I'm not going to make any religion. I'm just following my brain. Hey. Because as I know, God gave us a brain. So I didn't make my mind wow. busy by following the books. I always, when I was 10 years old, I was just thinking, thinking, thinking until now. Even. So I tried to just thinking, thinking, he's saying, <laughs> God as long as not a stone. Who told you stone is not a God? Anyway, <laughs> I'll answer your a basic question. The basic question is that Muslims came to Persia and they conquered and they forced mm. people to accept Islam so no one should force at all. I agree with you. Point to be noted is that today the media the media media promotes that Islam was fed by the sword. Mm. I am aware that there are certain black sheep in the Muslim community and there are certain Muslim rulers who did wrong things. But as a whole Islam was never spread by the sword. Islam was never spread by the sword. I speak by sword. Sword, sword. Sword. Sword me force. Force. Yeah. Like you said, now Muslims came and conquered yeah. Persia, etc. You see, everywhere it's happening. Hmm. There are wars taking place. But in Islam, it's clearly mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 256. Like Rafid Deen, there's no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. What we see today, if we analyze that we Muslims, hmm. We Muslims, we were the lord of the Arab lands for more than 1400 years. For the past 1400 years, the Muslims were the lord of the Arab lands. For a few years, the Britishers came, for a few years, the French came. But overall, the Muslims were the ruler of the Arab land. Yet today, there are more than 9 million Christians who are Coptic Christians. That means they are Christians in generation. If the Muslims wanted, they could have forced each and every non-Muslim to accept Islam at the point of the sword. In the Arab land. 
these more than 9 million Coptic Christians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was inspired by the sword. We Muslims, we ruled India for more than a thousand years. We ruled India for more than a thousand years. If we wanted, we could have forced every non-Muslim Indian to accept Islam at the point of the sword. Today, more than 80% of the Indians are non-Muslims. These more than 80% non-Muslim Indians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was inspired by the sword. Which Muslim army has come to Indonesia? Indonesia today has the largest number of Muslims in any country, more than 200 million Muslims. In Malaysia, more than 55% of the citizens of Malaysia are Muslim. I am asking you, which Muslim army came to Malaysia? Your country, which Muslim army came? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? It was the business, it was the traders. When they came here, people accepted this religion. It is the media hype which talks about Islam was spread by the sword. Yes, there were a few people. There were a few black sheep of the Muslim community. Brother, you ask the question, you are listening or you are raising the hand? Okay, sure, yeah. sure. You ask sure. the question, you give the background, I listen to it and now you want to raise your hand. I have not completed my answer. Okay, sure, continue. If you ask the question, you should think. Because if you're thinking something, I'm a doctor. Hmm. If you're thinking, that means you won't hear my answer. If I ask you to repeat, you won't be able to repeat 25%. So when you listen, you should give attention. Mm -hmm. I'm a doctor. I've done psychology also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the media hype. If you read Thomas Carlyle, Thomas Carlyle, historian, he writes in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship. He puts number one hero prophet as Prophet Muhammad He's a Christian. He says, if every new idea originates in one man's head, one man's head it dwells alone in the full world, it will do little good if he takes up a sword and propagates it. Mm. You have to first get your sword. He's talking about sword of intellect. There was a survey done in the Plain Tooth magazine. A survey in the increase of the major world religions in a span of 50 years. In a span of 50 years, from 1934 to 1984. In a span of 50 years, the increase in the major world religion. It came in Reader Digest, Almanic Yearbook, 1984. Number one maximum increase in religion, it's Islam, 235%. Christianity, only 47%. I am asking you, which war took place between 1934 and 1984, which forced the non-Muslim to accept Islam? Which war? Which war? Huh. Today, today, leave aside the past. Today, the fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. I am asking you, who is forcing the Americans to accept Islam? Who is forcing the Europeans to accept Islam? <laughs> you were not there born. Were you present in the past? Arabs came to my land and forced. Where were you present? This is history. Many things in history is false. So Pro that's what? what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's not convinced enough. Let's A very famous him. historian, Dilefe Oleri, mm. he writes in the book, Islam at the Crossroad, page number 8. He says, history makes it clear. Mm. History makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword, is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians ever repeated. Mm. Who says that? Dilesi Oleri. History makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians ever repeated. This is just in the media today. Mm. Muslim terrorists, Muslim terrorists. I am asking you, did any Muslim attack you in this country? No, never. But the media says Muslim the terrorist. Yeah, media is just nonsense. Yes, same way your history is also nonsense. <laughs> when media is nonsense, the history is also nonsense. Some is correct, some is wrong. That's the reason if you hear the answer. I would like to end my answer with the quotation of Dr. Adam Pearson. Dr. Adam Pearson says that people who worry mm that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. The bomb of peace, it fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Okay, thank you, doctor, for your answer. But the point is, I didn't get the right answer because that's not media, that's his story.
And history is not something that can be written the false way. Because if it be written the false way, it can be changed. But that was the true history in all over the world and is written every place. Brother, did places. you hear my quotation yes, of Delacy O'Leary? Can you repeat it? Repeat what? Repeat Delacy O'Leary's quotation. Ah. I said it twice, not once, twice. Ah. Most but of my answer was once. I said twice. Now repeat it. Repeat it to fifty percent. So what's the point of repeating that word? I want to know whether you it went into your head or not. No, because that's what is in my head is that is a history first thing. I'm asking you, can you repeat the statement the answer which I gave earlier? If you cannot repeat that means it's useless me repeating the answer. You're not listening to me. You're thinking something. No, I'm listening to you. Can you repeat Can you repeat the statement of Delacy O'Leary, a very famous historian? Goodness. No, I can't. I can't. I'm saying it for third time. Listen, listen to it and go behind the queue. Ah. Delacy O'Leary says that history makes it clear the legend of fanatical Muslims forcing Islam at the point of the sword or what conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. Delacy O'Leary says history has been history telling now. falsehood and you're saying history, I believe in history. Delacy O'Leary is saying that what history says that Muslims are forcing Islam at the point of the sword is the most fantastic myth that historians have repeated. So you have got influenced by the myth. So now think it's a myth and forget it and believe in the fact. The fact is you read the Quran and inshallah I want you to revert to Islam. Revert back to the religion of your parents inshallah. Okay. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 no. Seriously, when I say the man didn't actually get the guy's question, because you telling us, okay, the history did, did I can't even, the last thing he says, I mean, I can't put it in my head. It's too technical. He's trying to say that it he sees islamic as something that you have to force people to join that it's from a muslim family but he is not a religious person he believes there's god and he uses wisdom to do things and you know he uses wisdom on that but he's not into any religion so in that acts that it seems Islam forces people to to convert. Simple question the guy asks, and I don't know what Zaki Naik was saying. Like he had a point, he made a point, he made a lot of points, but he didn't eat the question in particular. I was expecting him to say something very brief and direct and simple, something very simple. His explanation was so technical, like him saying that this and that. And he was asking the man, the guy that, ah, if you didn't listen to me, I repeat what I said. Ah, can you, even me that I'm listening, it's hard for me to actually pour down everything he quoted, everything he said about you not forcing anybody to to become a Muslim, and he was about he, he was about to ask question to get clarification. I wanted to be clarified. He needed clarification on that question because he was kind of lost and he didn't actually understand. And Zach Naik came for him, and oh my goodness! Well, Zach Naik um, explanation. What me I can say is the fact that even though the guy is trying to you know, revert back to a Muslim, even though he wants to, he wants to be a Muslim because his parents are Muslim. The explanation that I gave won't even ginger him to, 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 to go back or to revert to Islam. It, it won't ginger him at all because he didn't really uh, understand Zaki you know, explanation. And Zaki Naik didn't give him opportunity for him to actually express himself well and for him to actually understand the whole question well well thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you in the next one stay blessed bye